Hi guys, welcome back to my channel and if you're new here, welcome. My name is Alyssa and I am an owner of an online boutique called Listique. And today is a very special video because it is the kickoff of my series, Boss Up with Liss. And I thought it would be no better video than to start off with my friend here, Nita from Whiplash. I'm so excited to have you. Absolutely, yay. So in this new series, I'm gonna be interviewing a bunch of different boss babes to kind of show you guys and give you guys an idea if you guys wanna start your own business, what kind of different things you can do to boss up and level up and you know, just start making your own money and be your own boss on your own time. So for my first video in this series, I decided to interview my good friend here Nita because I've seen her over the years grow her lash business from day one to what it is today and she still is continuing to grow so much and so I thought it would be appropriate to go ahead and interview her so you guys can get a, get to know her a little bit better and more behind the scenes of how she grew to where she is today and you know what her future plans are so if you guys are interested in that then please keep on watching. All right, you guys, before we get straight into the questions, I did want to talk about a little bit of our background and how we know each other, um, because I have known Nita for quite some time. Man. It's been a long time. I would say we were 14, we 14, huh? We were 27, 28. Dude, oh my God, you guys. We have known each other since our freshman year in high school. So we go we, way back. So basically, yeah, we went to high school together. That's how we know each other, and we were, the class we had was, was avid. It was yes. a college preparatory <laughs> class. I see we were boss babies then too. Like, man, right? like, college yes. we were ahead of our game. So, you know, it distinguished us. Yeah, <laughs> honestly, I, I would say me and Nita have always kind of, like, even in high school, we were really good students, you know, like both Absolutely. of us. Absolutely. Yeah. Academics, yeah. everything. Like, we both obviously were college bound. We were, you know, prepared for all of that. So it was cool that, you know, I had a friend that was like minded in that aspect and even to this day like it just only totally made sense that we were going to be friends yeah, forever. Yeah, it, right? yeah it's really it's really cool so yeah we met in high school we went you know obviously throughout high school together right. we were friends and then for a little bit after high school we kind of went our separate ways right. for a little bit i mean it happens naturally in life you know you kind of right. just drift away but the best part is is that we've come back together in the recent years Absolutely. and I couldn't be happier because Nita has her own business as well and honestly she is just like a mentor to me mm -hmm. and I look up to her so much because like I said in the beginning she has grown her business like exponentially in the past couple of years so Short period of time, I would yeah say. so that's just a little bit about our background we'll how we know each other the yes. in a little bit yes. right so. so let's go ahead and get started with the questions okay yep. Nita so why don't you tell us a little bit about your background a little bit about yourself and your business perfect so you guys I was totally college bound as Alyssa said so I started off in college graduated did my thing there got an undergraduate a postgraduate job um, but it wasn't fulfilling. To me, I've always kind of been into the beauty stuff and you know, doing my makeup at home here and there and it, was, it wasn't it was anything more than that. It, it wasn't like I woke up and said, I'm gonna do this. Mm -hmm. It kind of just fell in my lap, to be honest. I don't have an extravagant story, so um, it was just getting by, you know, doing trade-offs in college yeah. for liquor. <laughs> Wait, what? It I was, didn't know you were trading off. Swear, it was started. like, you know, it was like, hey, do my hair or do my nails, that you know, so um, and then I'll do your eyelashes for you. It was honestly like just something that we were doing and it was resourceful because it was at one location, Cal State yeah. LA. Yeah. So um, <laughs> that's all it was. And then um, upon graduating, I was like, okay, I have my job. Still not as fulfilling as what I kind of had a preview of before Join. previously. So, um, I took a formal class to see if this was something I can monetize, I can that I can profit off of, and um, slowly but surely I got my one client, one turned into two, and you know I celebrate every um, milestone. Milestone, absolutely, yes. like you know from 50 followers, 50 real people, and I don't even want to keep on referring to followers, but when I say following, mm -hmm. is ne not necessarily in social media, but also in real life, like you know word of mouth referrals, things yeah. like that, and that's it, then it just it just blew up yeah. so it just naturally I like talking to people I'm a talkative person um, I like actually building that rapport with people and remembering you know you know hey how was that one weekend or whatever it was mm -hmm. you know whatever you're getting I'm beautifying you for yeah you know um, so it was just naturally it just kind of it kind of grew and I love it I fell in love with it 
So would you say that you had like entrepreneur mindset at first? Like it was built in? Like is that something that you had already? Just cause, you know, going back to you mm -hmm. having it in college and bartering. Oh, right. Or is that something that you kind of got over time? Well, um, I don't know if you remember my mom and dad had that donut shop. And I remember yes. it. So mom and dad. Classic Glendale So my parents, have a donut, donut right, donut right. my parents have a donut shop. And mm -hmm. what that entailed was, you know, um, upselling them like you know marketing their donut shops and yeah. even it wasn't nothing it wasn't for profit it was just more so hey I got a family business over there in the corner in so Glendale if y'all want some come yeah. through type of thing and you know just them as a focal point of you know a resource for me it was a great guidance um, for me to develop my own skills and you know my parents always put me in a in like a tutoring position or um, a mentoring position so it just naturally you just develop those leadership skills yeah. and I just I never thought it would translate into totally. my own Simply. business yeah. right yeah. so no, totally that makes sense it, it's amazing it just kind of come came in into like full together circle like absolutely. everything the way it worked out in your life absolutely yes that's so cool yeah. so question number one is how did you get started with whiplash and what inspired you um, what started off as a weekend thing maybe taking one or two clients on a Saturday, on a random Saturday before I went and turned up. <laughs> was, right before um, the turn up. Right before the turn up. You know, it was just like the money for the turn up, right? Yeah. So um, it, it, was, it was just something that I was like, okay, you know what? If I actually am take, you know, I wouldn't say taking people, earning money and making money off of a skill set, I really need to make sure that I'm doing the best that I can and putting my best foot forward. So yeah. I enrolled myself in a class, you know, despite a class, it was a amazing class um, I took it and I got great feedback I went home she said I did amazing from class and it was a one-on-one -on -one private class so not knowing anything about beauty just I was like you know what if I don't do anything with it it's a skill that I'm already doing might as well put it in my back pocket and maybe use it for later and um, leaving that class I knew I was gonna enroll in esthetician school yeah so I enrolled in esthetician school that week um, finished in less than a year so that was what in 2017 finished in 2018 upon finishing 2018 that day that I got my license I actually enrolled I'm sorry not enrolled I got connected to the student that I helped assist class for and mm. she told me about an opening at a, a local studio in Downey oh, okay. and that's how I started my rental for and that went on for about a year um, you had a booth inside a booth studio. inside another studio. It okay. wasn't my studio. I was just solely renting, and that's what booth rent is, pretty much, right? Um, mm -hmm. I did that for a little bit, and then um, pause. Do you want to explain to them um, a little bit about booth rental? So, does it go by commission? Okay, you know, just sure. so get an idea. So, if, booth you know, rental is a, it could it could be one of two things. It can be you working directly as a um, commissioner. So you would work with the employee, the employer that you, you know, of the studio where you would get like a commission, a percentage. Mm -hmm. um, and that could be detailed into maybe 50, 50, you know, 50 for me, 50 for them or 60 for me or 40 for them. Okay. It just totally is contingent on the, um, the point. right, the, the contract or the agreed upon okay. rate. Right. And then whereas booth rental, you have a set price, you make what you keep. You, you keep what you make, I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. You keep what you make and it's a monthly rate. So okay. um, that could be either weekly, monthly, things like that. Okay, mm -hmm. and so that's where you started. And that's what that. I did. I just okay. was like, you know what, I, I'm going straight for the booth rent because that way I can maximize as many clients that I can you know, get and I, I don't have to be on somebody else's schedule. schedule. And that was the main priority yeah. there. That mm -hmm. makes sense, okay. Cool. So then you started there and then started there and then a year in I was like, you know, it wasn't until somebody was like I kind of got a little bit more traction. I was like, okay, you know, I think I need to start looking elsewhere for my own and It went it, it, it literally that's what happened and it, I found a posting on loopnet.com It Wait, was what is it? loopnet. Loopnet? It's loopnet. Okay. I think that's what it's called loopnet.com Okay, and what that is is you just Google all the local maybe um spaces around your area or whatever city you type in and if you wanted a commercial print space office space okay. whatever it was and to me I don't I didn't even know what I was looking for I just wanted my own you know you something knew you wanted knew something that, that was yours. you know that I can play my music in and, and not you know and dress the way I want and yeah. be loud and not even loud just host my own space you know without having to you know, someone else's turn, have right? lights turn off on me or oh, you know yeah. I mean 
it happened, lights turned off on you, or you know there wasn't sufficient toiletries in the restroom, things like that. Mm -hmm. I wanted it to be not only a service but also an experience for my clients right. so that was something that was really important to me and I really worked hard to attain. Okay so question number two is how did you know it was time to make the next move and open a studio? So kind of going back to you know okay your studio, so how did you know it was time? How did I know it was time? It was time to open up my own studio when a lot of folks online and I like I said it didn't even have to be a crazy amount of following or anything like that it was just I had somewhat of a small following on Instagram and it was until so people started noticing my skill set. You know, it was it, how it set apart from other artists maybe. You know, this is a saturated industry, but that didn't stop me from, you know, still pursuing, you know, I think what's for me. I can't service all the women in the world, but right. I can have my solid customers. Customers, mm -hmm. you know, 30, 40 clients a week and mm -hmm. I'd still be okay, you know? Mm -hmm. So, um it wasn't until other artists noticed, hey, what glue are you using or what lashes are you using? And I was like, okay, am I going to open these trade secrets? Am I going to start training people? Like, what's the deal? And I just didn't feel it was my place to be doing all and expanding Whiplash the best of its ability in a limited space, in a limited room mm -hmm. that I was renting in. So it was time and it was only a year transition. Yeah, I, I opened, I, um, I was at the location and not only that. It took a lot of like it was just a, an empty room so it's like was I just gonna include paint you know slap on paint mm -hmm. I was putting a lot of money into the room and I was thinking is this gonna be is it gonna be mine to keep when I leave you mm -hmm. know all this renovations and mm -hmm. things like that I would, yeah. I would rather put in something that I knew that was representing web flash at the end of the day yeah. mm -hmm, versus the room of us fall. Someone you get what I'm saying? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So essentially, you took that leap because you needed like a multi use space. Right. It's not only just multi use space because yeah. now it went from servicing to, to expanding, so expanding much more it to teaching yeah. to later on products. So I wasn't able to do that in a in a singular room. Okay. Mm -hmm. That makes sense. And I mean, eventually, that's the goal is to keep growing, right? The growing, so. and I think that was what kind of propelled you everything that you just it was time it was time mm -hmm. okay cool okay question number three is what kind of obstacles did you run into when opening up your studio um in regards to opening my studio i focused on quality of work and i think that really just goes hand in hand in skill set having a skill set and being able to produce it and reproduce it time and time again appointment after appointment right as well as in the form of a different artist. You know, I can only have one of me. So finding other artists to duplicate my type of style and my type of work was a challenge for sure. And so when I opened this place, it was actually empty for almost a year. I remember and, that. Mm -hmm. I remember you calling me like, I got the space. I got the but space. Then, like, there but, was so much to do to it. But I, I think one thing that I will highlight for myself was that I made sure that I wasn't gonna open up a space depending on booth rent or depending on the commission of the folks to make ends meet. I knew that I could hold it down regardless if there was obstacles or there was friction or mm -hmm. I, I played every scenario in my head. And so I think that being ahead of the game mm -hmm. really helped prepare for the worst. Mm -hmm. And thank goodness nothing came out of it that was that bad. So to me, I, I think that that within itself was the biggest challenge. Um, Aside from that was, I think this is a women's industry, predominantly. I wouldn't mm -hmm. want to discourage anybody who would, you know, want to mm -hmm. go into this. But I think that maybe the neighbors around here was just like, oh, this mm -hmm. little girl, this little girl. And I yeah. am young. You know, it was age. It was yeah. my, it was me being a female. You're tiny. <laughs> and tiny. I did this solely without my boyfriend's help. And there was no male figure here. And it was I, you it doing was, a damn thing by yourself that as well as I didn't even my boyfriend my dad they all were like hey let me know what you can help and I wanted it to be a surprise for everybody so I kept it low key like your I would work. rather pay oh. a contractor to lift these boxes left and right mm -hmm. versus Family. hey dad whenever you have time can you come help me lift this or can you help me put this screw in I would rather have done it or try to figure it out myself. I was YouTube was my best friend, so yep. it's really nice that I'm YouTube here. Friend, YouTube yep. is my was my best friend. Yeah. Google was a great resource as well. Yeah. So I just think that having something like this is going to be beneficial to pay it forward whenever somebody just has a question, a mm -hmm. simple question. Mm -hmm. So that those two were my obstacles. Um, just me being myself, 
in a new area and me being a minority within a minority neighborhood so new and just that fear never stops I will say but Mm -hmm. you try to alleviate it as much as you can Mm -hmm. so you protect yourself as much as you can consent forms um, insurance policies trying to make sure that you are you know covered all ends um, just making sure that you're putting your best foot forward your your willingness to help your clients you know I try to think of every client as a boss as my own boss like Mm -hmm. a boss that I cater to so you you know I have a boss I have Mm -hmm. somebody to cater to at two at Mm -hmm. three at four so they're okay you keep that, that same energy. energy. Mm-hmm. That makes sense. Keeping that same energy across the board yeah. was really important. So yeah, and I think going back to the point of even just like taking the whole year before she, you know, she got her studio and then she had the grand opening. Mm-hmm. I think that really helped you, like you said, because one, you went at your own pace, and two, mm-hmm. like you said, you tried every scenario in your head to best prepare yourself. Because I Absolutely. feel like sometimes people rush things because they're just so impatient. Or I think that was, focus. I did myself a favor. I can't yeah. even tell you enough. And, you know, sometimes taking that risk is amazing and it mm-hmm. works for some people. But I knew that for me, I was, I had to be strategic. That's all yeah. it was. And sometimes being strategic may include a little bit more time, time. and thoughtfulness and, yeah. you know, like planning and difference. mapping. A completely huge difference. Yeah. You know, I want to tell you something. My mom said, she was like, Nita, why are you doing so much things to the shop? They're still going to come. And I was like, you're right. But at the end of the day, it's an experience. And back. it comes back to the experience. Me wanting to yeah. exemplify an experience for my clientele or anybody that steps foot. I yeah. want it to be a welcoming space. Like, you ever seen barbershop? Mm-hmm. Okay. Well, okay. <laughs> well, you guys ever seen barbershop or a beauty shop with Queen Latifah? Okay, yeah. It, it, it's a fun, like, you know, we hop conversations yeah. like, oh, you said what over there? Yeah. Like, it, there's artists and their client, there's clientele, and every artist has their own client, and mm-hmm. we're just constantly just having a good time good time it's, it's good music sometimes and some mimosas mean, we're rolling yeah. through whatever I, it see, is we see it's mimosas just, on you guys instagram see, all you, the time. i'm constantly posting guys so yeah. if you guys haven't seen that yeah. it's it's always no it's, it's, always it's a, a fun, fun environment for sure and i think it has made all the difference like you said because there could be just servicing and then there could be the experience and then that's how you guarantee that they're going to come back you know right they, and sometimes i feel like even when i first started i still had that same priority with my clients you know even though when I was lashing at home I made sure hey you want your you want your wine glass did you want to make sure you know do this like you mm-hmm. still have that I'm the, still the same person I'm, I'm still the same oriented or yes, yes. thank you <laughs> <laughs> yeah I mean you worked retail before so you know how oh my goodness it is right customer service mm-hmm. yeah mm-hmm. Cool, cool. okay okay so question number four walk us to a typical day for whiplash perfect so a uh, typical day at whiplash will start the day before um, the night before, for that matter, uh, I will make sure that my employees will show up in time. Uh, if there's anything that they might need to let me know ahead of time, this would be the great time to be transparent and help me align my day. Now, um, I'd be here at the shop around seven o'clock. Do that so around early. seven o'clock. Oh my goodness. Seven seven thirty, just depending. Maybe you know, I'll scoot them back. And that's an everyday whatever. thing. It is an everyday thing. Okay. So I work from pretty much seven days a week almost. I'm here at the studio. If I'm not taking clients, I'm still here at the studio. So um, even on a Sunday. So uh, I also, so I kind of break up service as well as product packaging. I also sell product as well. So I'll service probably from seven to two. And the rest of that time, I'll be able to finally eat (laughs) (laughs) eat um a a quick meal in between yeah process my orders just a little bit more paced out more mellow time frame it's not as i need to meet like my hour deadline you know you were that way i remember i was once upon a time she was taking like how many clients a day and you were like it was no time for anything else right but you're moving a little bit you know, I'm, I'm working so much better on time management. I literally have to give myself a pat on the But you're a workaholic. That's why, you guys. She's a workaholic. Yeah. She would rather take, like, freaking 10, you know, like, clients. clients. Versus yeah, stop. Than give but, yourself I mean, time for you. I think that bending over backwards is great, but just know that it starts to take a toll on your body yeah. when you're not valued. So, mm-hmm. basically, it, that's why it's structured. But now that I have a structure, I'll end around two or three. Okay, so that's I'll start bad. processing my orders from my online business. Uh, you know, orders will come in, and I try to process them in a timely manner. Mm-hmm. Um, and I'll be able to drop it off myself, at, so I know every single one is 
traceable mm -hmm. it's accounted for mm -hmm. um, I package everything myself and that will be done around three three to five okay and I need to hit the deadline for, for five, five o'clock yeah. mm -hmm. so that is a typical day then I'll go home so after that you do, do some more home. emails okay. oh okay. if I do go home or if I do here it do it here um, sometimes I think that being at work I'm able to zone in to mm -hmm. my job and, and be a little bit more efficient not having the distraction yeah. of being at home of course so I'll answer emails post and all throughout the whole day you guys I am posting and I know Alyssa are. is like literally so she amazing, does not do miss a like a every client post. Every, but I, I think that's also holding myself accountable for the yeah. quality of work that I produce yeah. so I think everything goes hand in hand I think that if you commit to posting every client then they see that it's consistent work. You right. post every mishap or, you know, maybe something, you know, the ugly side of lashing, maybe somebody came in with, with the ugly removal, whatever it is. I try to document these things, mm -hmm, so. document these things, and people love it. And I think that, I, I think that it really helps grow the brand. Mm -hmm. And I, it's amazing. People, sh people see you use the product, people see you, um, Utilize it in different ways, um, and, and, mm -hmm. and it shows. It shows yeah. in the, the growth of your your brand. Mm -hmm. No, for sure. I I totally get it that like, even though you're so busy throughout your day, you're still making the time to like, you know, post and grow because that's what's really essentially. You know, obviously. I I, I gotta know. be, and you know, I think it, it was a joke. It was like I gotta be the first little dot on the storyline it, it gotta be on the <laughs> first little dot so if you're consistently posting then yeah. you're consistently in They're bird's in the, eye view mm -hmm. and i think that's space. completely essential in marketing yeah. and it's essential in growing your your target audience yeah mm -hmm. for sure for sure cool so then you go home about i go home i try so now i go home about mm, I'll, I'll go home. okay so here's <laughs> let me you want the you want the, the real, real truth <laughs> so i'll go home around well five o'clock i'll be out at the post office i don't okay. come back here i'll okay. go home okay i'll eat my dinner okay and then sometimes i'll come, come back, back to the shop around nine o'clock i see you post around nine o'clock i'll sit here and that's that's the stuff that i don't really post like that's i mean i do post it if i need to be if i'm you know i want to go on live or something but that's where the real grind is at because so this is the work before night. work yeah i'm prepping i'm cleaning my tools do you think after a full day's of work i'm going to be stuff. ready to scrub scrub tweezers mm -hmm. i'm i'm likely to stab myself at the end of the day <laughs> i need to go home take a mental break come back okay. and be gentle to myself and i think that's something that is um really important in trying to balance your time mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. that's good you give yourself a little bit at least you know you get to be home with your family for dinner oh my gosh that and that little, was like, amazing for yeah. me and i think having that type of okay hour by hour okay i have the next hour mm -hmm. i know what i'm about to do doing that activity for that hour i'm mentally preparing for the next mm -hmm. and so it continues that makes sense though mm -hmm. that's good so that way you can be you know come back prepare for the next day get everything mm -hmm. going and then okay Absolutely. so this is a good question right here Talk to me. do you have haters Ooh. <laughs> and or how do you respond to competition people watching you uh-huh um I th um in regards to having haters um i think it's important to acknowledge that not everything is against you personally mm -hmm. so if it may be a hater so what like to me i think it's really important to not be bothered by it and mm -hmm. if it does you know you have your moment and you know move on i will tell you like it didn't feel good when i put up my sign i got egged i it doesn't feel good that i remember you calling me that day. yeah it doesn't feel good that you know people write anonymous reviews that really don't reflect or merit mm -hmm. the type of service that i provide or just people you know or losing clients or whatever that, that's mm -hmm. real like that happens and right. you just have to learn that you know you're gonna attract what you attract and you're gonna lose out what you're gonna lose out it's totally okay yeah. so it just comes with it and i think that how do i handle it i think I, like i'm human mm -hmm. you know it hurts sometimes mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. but i think i've learned how to really really try to recommit every morning and let go what i can't control it's, mm -hmm. yeah it's so true i feel like you know, as you keep leveling up and as you keep succeeding, right. of course, if that's that's inevitable. It's going to be there. That, you know, whether it's a hater or whether it's a competitor. That's it's a competitor watching, that's you know, watching. Mm -hmm. But in return, and I like that you said competitor because I, the word competitor is not always translatable to tra co competition. Right. Competitor just means your local, your other peers that do the same do thing. Do the same thing. Yep. 
it is very clear that in lashing that there are many 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 people who get into this craft mm -hmm. but I'm a taste for somebody and I think that's one thing that I wear well I wear that super well. I know that I'm a taste for somebody. I might not be the taste for that person that don't like me or mm -hmm. I'm that person that doesn't like that style, that specific lash style. Mm -hmm. But I think it's so important to your growth as well as your confidence and your branding that you're solid regardless. You know, you don't sway. You don't sway. And I think that with me, I'm okay with not being somebody else's taste because there's so many other people, people. that that do them. like my yeah. stuff, you know? Yeah, there's other people And I think and that um, when you just stick to yourself, I, I, I don't engage. That's one thing you won't get, see out of me mm -hmm. is I won't engage in yeah. an energy that's not, um, that's not gonna help me grow or that's not gonna be beneficial mm -hmm. to me. Like, if I feel like if you dwell on something or you, you dwell on something more than you should, then you're going through it twice. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So that's more burden on me, mm -hmm. and I don't got time. Taking more of your energy that you just yeah. Did you, you hear my schedule time. earlier? I'm a little full in the it, day. I don't really, really have lunch. time. I barely. Time time. I inhale my lunch, so <laughs> I really think that if I put if I energy if I care about it yeah. enough, like I would have done everything to prevent it in the first place to go. Fast. Okay, guys. So we're moving on to the last bit of questions, and these next set of questions are going to be more specific to anyone who is watching that is interested in getting into the lash trade um you know and is watching this video and wants to do lashing so with that being said my first question is how can someone get started lashing and create their own business um in regards to lashing uh you would want to first know if you're good i mean i think that's really important important <laughs> right you know i think that you know maybe a student that is a little interested i always welcome them to come into the studio and talk to me i wouldn't want somebody investing all their money blindly i want you i want you i want you as a student to mm -hmm. understand you know when you come to me can you picture working in a salon quality I'm doing this because the thing is i'm not just teaching i'm actually you know teaching correct etiquette correct customer service correct experience you so know what I'm more saying? to that than just there's the more than just the skill set so okay. to me I just feel as though you can be bomb as an artist but are you gonna be bomb as a business it's true not right? everybody's business people I will say you can you know like you said you could be a lash tech you could be this but doesn't mean you're gonna be successful as a business person are you gonna be able to retain your clients yes. are you gonna be able to promote yourself are you gonna because to me I honestly feel as though sometimes people are a little bit shy and I think that's okay mm -hmm. I think that's a very honest thing when you're going into a new trade but are you going to be able to come out of there with um to promote yourself are you going to be able to be your own advocate your business's own advocate i think that as a fellow um business owner you know that you're constantly doing the thing you're also employee your employer yep. your janitor you do from top to everything. bottom everything yep. so from editing your videos and anything anything at this mm -hmm. point you're creating your content you're doing everything so it's it's a well-rounded thing and mm -hmm. I just think that people need to prepare themselves for that okay it's not just the money so that's first now. tip is be mentally prepared on what you're getting yourself into. right okay and, and then how would somebody get into this mm -hmm. Be selective. I think that if you're going to be learning, don't just learn from anything. Anything, you know. Be resourceful. Are you gonna? Are you finding support from the person you're learning from? Are you? Are they known for you know quality education? Mm -hmm. Are you? Um, are you able to resource it or find alternative uh, information of that field? Mm -hmm. Things like that really matter as well because. If you think about it, if you're kind of stuck, what are you going to do? Mm -hmm. You know? Continue. So are you going to be able to grow when you hit a roadblock? Mm -hmm. You know? And I think that is contingent on quality education. Um, and that's how, that's the mentality of, that I have when mm -hmm. I teach my students mm -hmm. um, in my courses. So mm -hmm. now would you say, so for someone who wants to start out, so you would recommend for sure taking a class to get that quality education and all those other avenues not just the lashing mm -hmm. versus let's say maybe like youtube or something because i mean maybe you could teach maybe, yourself on youtube but maybe, it wouldn't be the same right? it wouldn't be the same and i think that to me i go on youtube mm -hmm. i also think that it's important to go follow like-minded styles like-minded artists 
So you want to be able to still take that student in you across the board. I am still a student to Always. this day. Forever. And I yeah. think that is so important in pushing my skill set mm -hmm. into where it is now. You know, now I can honestly say I can do this and I know what's going to happen when I do it this way mm -hmm. versus blindly, oh, this is what I was taught and this is the only way I'm going to do, do it, it. Yeah. black and white, you know? Yeah. There's alternative to things, and I think that once you master one thing, learn different techniques. You can take multiple sure. classes. Mm -hmm. You don't have to take just one class. Mm -hmm. Be a student always. And I always. think that could entail mm -hmm. taking the same type of class in a different setting. Even if you learn one thing from one artist or one Another thing one. from one class, it doesn't mean that you wasted your time. It's, right. it's molding you into the prospective artist that you'd like to be, right? Mm -hmm. That makes sense. Mm -hmm. And um, like when someone takes your class, do you know, like they take your class and that's it, or they can come back and ask you questions? Yeah, or like their mentor absolutely. in a way, right? Um, when I have my students, I try to take in a mentor, mentee mentor relationship okay. with them. That means I can be accessible to them. Uh, upon you know support after after the class but okay. upon upon completion so they can come shadow me um, and things like that really are really important I try important to be to as grow. as yeah. as accessible as possible okay. I think it's really important to have that support when you're learning a new skill okay mm -hmm. so step one see if this is for you and if you're good mm -hmm. and step two find a class you know, anywhere and get that quality education to right. make the next step in becoming a artist. Right. Okay, so this next question is kind of more like into the nitty gritty. I'm mm -hmm. sure that many people might have questions for. Do you need any licenses, certificates? You know, do you have to go to like cosmetology school? Mm -hmm. How does all that work if someone's interested in getting into this field? Perfect. So when I first started, I was working freelance and the whole licensing thing, it could be a little confusing only because if you were to work in a salon in the state of California, you are going to have to have a license, okay? Um, certification is one of, I like to think of it as like an elective in high school. It's a specialty. Okay. But as far as the licensure, that's what's going to allow you to work in a salon setting. Okay. Kind of, to me, I'm not the lash police. I'm not going to say who should, who couldn't, because every state is different. Okay. I teach a technique course. so. A lot of my girls, my a lot of my following is not just based out in California, and different states have different regulations. So to me, my class is open for all. You don't have to disclose where you're from or what background you have. It's a beginner's course. So if somebody were to want to take a course with me, and like I said, I'm not going to be, what are your past? Do you have a uh -huh. GED? None yeah. of that. So it's more so advertised as a technique course because technique you're learning course. my skill. That makes sense. It's not necessarily a certificate, like a, a, a certificate a of a license level. That's that's an accreditation um, college or or a, a specialty difference. college. Yes, there's a huge difference. So okay. certificate and license um, is ideal in the state of California to work in a salon. But if you were to just be on set, maybe or work from home, have a home studio. Um, it would be fine with just a certificate. Um, I do recommend though, anybody that does get into lashing, I did it in reverse. Who's to say you can't do that? But if you were to take on real, like, you know, a, a consistent clientele base, mm -hmm. um, I do recommend getting your license because that's just gonna be, play a part in one, your pricing. You wanna mm -hmm. be credible. You wanna say, you know, what school you went to, you said, you know, you did all those hours right. and your state, uh, your state highlighted like your state acknowledge your mm -hmm. state acknowledges you as an artist you mm -hmm. know and that within itself like i said will play into pricing of what you can charge and um your credibility as well all right guys so we are wrapping it up down to our last question what advice would you give to an aspiring lash tech um love what you do because you will get burnt out so Okay. Maybe do a little bit of research. I think that's really important because when you're so eager to do something, I feel like sometimes when you're eager, you yeah. look past a lot look of things. Past, overstep. Like mm -hmm. maybe you know the artist that you want to learn from. Is it is the price kind of fogging your judgment? Is your you know what I mean? Yeah, um, is the consider. skill set going to be attainable? Is this you know with practice? Things like that are really big in making a life decision and learning a new skill set mm -hmm. starting a new business and putting slapping your name on it i don't like i said i did not have 
artists in here because I didn't want it to be like, I can fill my beds up tomorrow if I really want it. Mm -hmm. But I want my reputation. I think reputation so really smart, goes right. so much further and right. honesty and integrity right. really upholds my brand and I, I'm proud of my brand. I'm not ashamed of it. I, you know, any questions that somebody has, I say it loud and proud, even the price points. Mm -hmm. I remember when somebody was asking me, how much do you charge? I said it loud and proud. Mm -hmm. I charge X amount mm -hmm. at the time. Mm -hmm. And with every skill, it goes up, you know? But right. a lot of times people are like, yeah, but I have discounts. I'm not trying to attract group punk clients. Yeah. I'm not trying to attract. I have a Same very clientele. specific type of clientele that I target to. And and that's for you. I, not even, a, yes, exactly. That's you know? for me. But it just naturally appeals to people like right. that. That you know you want the best of the best it's a luxury service and an upscale studio that i provide here mm -hmm. it's a top-notch experience too yeah so. and i think that's a main point too is to remember lashes are a luxury service it's not absolutely it's like, not like something that oh i can just go to this person mm -hmm. people people when they find something that they like they stick to it mm -hmm. so sure i have clients that have been with me for years i've learned their daughters their mm -hmm. pregnancies, mm -hmm. oh, wow. everything, all that. I've gone through yeah. it. So I, I, you know, and then we put them like a little therapist. Oh, <laughs> yeah, I would think so. Like my nail person, you know, you mm -hmm. talk to them and all that. So that's mm -hmm. really cool. Right, guys, that concludes this video with my girl Anita from Whiplash. I hope you guys found this video insightful. You guys learned more about lash extensions, lash tech, the whole service industry. Propelling it forward, yes, whatever you guys grow. might need. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. If you guys have any questions, you please Yeah, like a little nervous. bit more in depth. This was a yeah. little, you know, scratch on the surface for it, but definitely mm -hmm. feel free to reach out. It's at whiplashed, uh, it, at whipped lash. Uh, underscore, underscore on Instagram and I'll leave all of her oh, socials yeah, her everything in the description mm -hmm. um, and then definitely reach out I don't bite so I'll, I'll be able to help advise you on maybe like a, a question that you might have mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Even, even before you know committing to all that right doing she can help you with any questions Absolutely. you have um, and then I'll leave you know obviously her courses hey, if oh, some of you guys are interested <laughs> yeah down below she has her product line that she you know has if you guys are a lash tech already and are looking for new products so I'll go ahead and leave all of that good stuff down below. Perfect. But with all that being said, thank you so much for watching. Thank you, thank you for all your so Thank you for coming yes. and for sitting here with me and right. talking. And this was great. I'm yeah. so glad. I think it's this. I think it's really really awesome. You know, just to be able to like. Obviously, we have our friendship, but also to have like our business like, and be able to th like jump off each other, jump yeah. off of ideas, yeah. and I think that. I think oh, that's one thing about this lash industry is you meet so many resources. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's amazing. Yeah, honestly, yeah. When you're when you're your own boss, it's awesome. The places it'll take you, the people you'll meet, and all of that. You know, so mm -hmm. it's really cool. So thank you guys so much for watching. I really appreciate it. If you guys like this type of content, please give this video a thumbs up. Leave okay. some comments in the description, and stay tuned for episode two. So stay tuned for episode two of Boss Up with Liz. Turn your post notifications on, and I will talk to you guys in my next video. Bye. And a one, and a two. Lip gloss popping? No. Not. You got lip gloss peeling. I know. <laughs> <laughs> I know you know. Ready? No. <laughs> you know, like trying to cheat on the fucking test? I'm like, I'm hey guys, things. we're here with the list today. <laughs> I don't talk like that though. <laughs> yeah, you do. No, I don't. Yeah, you do. <laughs> Is it recording? Yes. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so anyway, take...